Frankie, today we have a special guest. We don't know who it is. We're gonna reveal him later in the show. Today on Pirate Pizza Review. Who could I be? Aha! Uh -huh. <gasps> it's Pirate Junk. <laughs> hey, are you excited to try pizza with us? Oh, I sure am. Well then put on a hook. Do I'm you... not supposed to eat pizza with a hook. <laughs> this hook has no interior <laughs> grip. Oh, it does have an interior grip. Do you like pizza? Uh, yeah. Because we got vegan, oh. gluten-free. Dave, why, why'd you invite me when you got crab pizza? <laughs> <laughs> so this is cheese lover. Cheese with the Z again. I mean, the whole point of, if you see Daya on anything, it means that they're using Daya cheese. Cheese. <laughs> but this one, this one you might be more happy about. The Screamin' Sicilian. Oh my. Does have a beautiful mustache, doesn't it? I'd call it cultural appropriation if I knew better. There's a lot of branding here that's going on that I, I it's Bessie's Revenge Cheese, Screamin' Sicilian Pizza Co. So what, what is it exactly? It's a pizza. <laughs> but you see, that's what we do here. It's got a lot of cheese. Illegal in some states. <laughs> Get the hell out of here. Inside of the mouth of the uh, box, yeah. you'll see two spots of uh, mozzarella. I'd call it heavy cheese. Yeah. yeah. So today's episode is for cheese lovers, both with a Z and, and with an S. S. With an S. The story goes around the edge of the box, which is terribly inconvenient. Illegal in some states are individually rolled, never pressed. Stone fired artisan crust struggles to hold the heaping pool of our tongue. Pop in secret recipe tomato sauce, which we craft from the finest tomatoes available. If you think you can handle this assault on your taste buds, bring it on. Gathered and harvested by the farmers of the land from the finest purveyors in American daily, dairy land. And then it repeats. Ad <laughs> nauseum. We got the oven preheated, 425, 475. It's probably because of the, the gluten-free crust. Maybe they're trying to brown the uh, cheese with a Z. One of the toughest things about frozen pizzas we've, mm -hmm. we've found in one episode, that crisping uh, frozen crust requires heat. Oh. Strange color. It looks of cheese. Like someone gave a t description to a government agency about what cheese was. It kind of looks like the cheese was like overcooked and then re-hardened. Yeah. It's brownish orange. What is the unladen weight of that pizza? 20.80 ounces. That's a heavy pizza. That's a screaming Sicilian. It's got like a pull tab. Yeah. I like that noise. That is a quality, that's a pretty good pull tab noise. Hi, bad bro. <laughs> it's not distributed. There's a whole area of the pizza. This happens. This is, this is what happens with frozen pizzas. Welcome to Pirate Pizza Review, buddy. Some settling may occur. Oh, wait a minute, what are these pans for? You don't put pizzas on pans. I do. What are you You're not about? supposed to. What are you supposed to put them on? Directly on the grill thing. Really? Yeah. You just, you just let the cheese drip into your oven? How dare you? <laughs> Come on to your show. <laughs> what does it say, Zach? It just says cook it. See, it's for a softer cool. crust, bake on an oven-proof pan. Oh, do we like a softer crust? No. <laughs> it's so generally understood the way the frozen pizzas work, they don't even give you directions anymore. You see, like this one says, place pizza directly on middle oven rack. What if you're new to frozen pizza? Then you best not try. If you defrost them and then do that, it will ruin your oven. This is especially hard with one eye. Well, don't do it. Well, join the <laughs> Do you like that? You like that it's it's got grips? I like that it's almost puppet-esque. We're doing this? We're doing it. Put it right on, Zach. Don't right. burn your precious. I can't see. Maybe lift the, the eye patch when handling the stove. They just expect people know that. Stupid plastic. Now we deal with the dead bake. We usually sit and watch, you know, movie trailers. trailers. Pacific Rim Uprising trailer. Oh, I haven't seen God. this. Let's, let's see it. <laughs> I'm gonna have two eyes. Here we go. It's Red Alert. Alert. Foxen. Generic. Something's klaxon. going on. Generic klaxon. Explosions. Big feet. Giant robots. Eye shots. Oh, the action stops. Oh, oh. that guy. Uh, yeah, Finn. We found a new actor. Now we get to put them in everything. Yes. Yeah, I thought it might have been Cuba Gooding Jr. for a minute, but he's disappeared. Do you ever find that like you you have a lasting image of a celebrity from a very old movie? And you assume that like in new movies they'll look that way? Yes, I couldn't <laughs> be less excited for this film. Well, I didn't really care for the first one. And I know a lot of people, there's a little bit of a cult around the first one. Yeah. The robots look cooler. It just looks like a big fancy robot film with a lot of CGI. I mean, that's the thing is like, I, I just get exhausted while I'm watching this movie. for 18 to 25 year old males. What I would watch would be a One Must Fall movie from the old OMF. DOS fighting game. OMF, Zach. Maybe Uwe Boll can direct it. He seems to get all the video game properties that are that no one's heard of. Yeah. 
How about a turtle game from the Apple II? Ooh. <laughs> logo. The logo. Hide turtle. <laughs> Hide turtle for 90 minutes. Ooh, sassy robots. <laughs> sassy pizza pirates. <laughs> it's Halloween time. I've been finding live performances of Nightmare Before Christmas music. Danny Elfman puts on concerts. Sure. I don't know if you knew this. I did not. He has some of the original voice actors doing the, the reprising their roles in Nightmare Before Christmas. One of them is Oogie Boogie. Oogie Boogie. By, I think the guy's name is Ken Page. Ken Page. And um, boy, is it sassy. Check this. <laughs> There was a comment on this video that was, that guy's suit is brighter than my future. <laughs> <laughs> what have we here? Sandy Claus, huh? Oh, I'm really scared. Kind of reminded me of like a Colonel Sanders almost. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> He's given a really good performance. And I mean, this is 24 years after that movie came out. Yeah, it's been a while. Just might spill a scene now if I know God have it first. <laughs> They did a really nice job with some of the performances. Danny Elfman does, does the singing voice for Jack Skellington. I don't yeah. know if you know that. He kills it. He does, did uh, Jack Le Jack's Lament. There's somewhere deep I didn't know, That's inside. actually Danny Elfman? Yeah. There's something And he does one of the, you know, the three kids that kidnap Santa Claus and yeah. want to chop him into bits and stuff. Um, if you listen to the lyrics, they're like, I know what we're going to do. We're going to take, take his <laughs> off yeah. and we're going to eat it and feed it to a bug and then puke it out. Let's pop him in a boiling pot and when he's done, we'll butter him up. Bury him for 90 years, then see if he talks. Tie him in the bag, throw him in the ocean, beat him with a stick. Lock him up for 90 years, chop him into bits. He does one of those kids. Pee Wee Herman does one of the other kids. Catherine O'Hara, the mom from Home Alone, Holy does cow. one of the other kids. Fun. It's kind of fun to see Pee Wee Herman go yeah. up there and be like, I've got another plan to catch this big red lobster bag. It's so cool that they're able to reassemble so much of the cast to do those. 24 years later. It'd be like if we, 24 years from now, got in pizza costumes. Yeah, and one more time. We'd probably be able to hydrate pizzas by then. When it's ready, could you just shove it in my mouth? <laughs> Don't you be a smart ass. Are you looking forward to them at all? The cheese one might be good. Is cheese a vital ingredient in a pizza? Oh yeah, it is. You're not having a pizza, you're having like... Original pizzas were marinara sauce and the crust. That's true. Well, come on, we know what we're talking about here. Pizza, pizza. So we got four minutes left. They're probably not even gonna be done. No, because we got dual pizza longer. in there. Dual, douche. How many other languages can we say the number two in? Knee. Knee. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, Dos. Du. French. Yeah. We should know German between us. Eins, zwei, zwei. Zwei, yeah, yeah, there we yeah, go. Whatever. Cool runnings. Yeah, cool runnings. They, they used, the Swiss used Gen the German count. Genius. Hey! I learned a, a an alphabet song in Spanish in in high school, yeah. and I remember it to this day. All right, sing it for us. A B C C D E F E H K H K L A M N N Y O P Q R R S T U V. I vaguely remember. W X Y Santa! The alphabet is easy, easy to learn. learn. It becomes very American after that. <laughs> <laughs> Speak I, in English, it's way easier. The alphabet is easy to learn. Speak in rhythm, each letter gets a turn. If there's one word I can always remember in Spanish, it's equipaje. <laughs> What is that word? Uh, like a, a luggage. Oh. Donde eres la biblioteca? And that means uh, bibliography. No, library. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Where is the bibliography? You're always grading papers? Yes. <laughs> Donde es la biblioteca? How does the Dewey Decimal System work in Spanish? When I hear that, I think one thing. And that Obsolete is... Obsolete information? <laughs> no. Conan the Librarian. Don't you know the Dewey Decimal System? In elementary school, we were all kind of like spontaneously invited to the cafetorium to watch a miniseries called Tomes and Talisman. 
and it was about the end of the world, and all digital technology is gone. But this was in the early 90s. This primitive species from the dark star solar system found Earth perfect for their favorite pastime, the disruption of all communication and data technology. In order to figure out like the aliens that killed us all, the, the kids need to learn the Dewey Decimal System and how to function in a library. Oh my God. Hope Leonard, 300 light years from home. That's the right book. And in the right place. Follow-up story to that, I had some memory of IMDBing it once, and finding out that the voice of Catwoman was in it at some point. I was at Rhode Island Comic Con and, she, and the voice of Catwoman was there. And I walked up to her and I said, Tomes and Talisman? And she was like, what? and you're supposed to like pay for a picture and stuff. Yeah. And I'm just like, Tomes and Talisman? <laughs> <laughs> so she brought her phone up. She's like, looking, she was looking at IMDb. <laughs> she, looked, she, check her she, she was like, I really don't think so. And I was like, it's, you had to learn the Dewey Decimal System to figure out. And she was like, I did a lot of like educational stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Hassling the poor woman. Yeah. And of course, like her handler was like, uh, uh move okay. along, sir. She There's seems someone. interested enough in what you're asking. <laughs> so I'm not gonna set this down, but I'm just about to. They're done. Well, the, yeah, they are done. Yeah. <laughs> Put the day out of the way. I just take the whole pizza to my couch and bring a pair of scissors and cut pieces off. <laughs> scissors? I Alexa, get me a scissor. I've never used scissors on pizza. What? So this is Dea, cheese. I don't think it's that bad. When you consider that there is no dairy here. It's it's okay. Their marinara sauce is pretty good. I think their bread is pretty good. The bread's like all right and free crust. But the cheese just doesn't doesn't agree with me. Salty, sour edge to it. Does it taste like the macaroni and cheese? Yes, it does, I think. If somebody gave me this and didn't tell me, I would just think it's a, you know, a lower end frozen pizza. I may not know. Dairy and soy free. Would you like to try it? Water, tapioca starch, brown rice flour, White whole grain The crust sorghum I actually flour. like. You don't like it? It doesn't have everything you don't want to eat. I mean, there's there's nothing good about it. <laughs> She's gonna say it tastes like mucus. It does. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I am gonna finish it, so I guess it's better yeah. than my initial response was. Nice. So how much was this, if I can if I can bring economics into the picture? <laughs> you think Frank and I tracked that stuff? <laughs> <laughs> the rich white man's anarchy. Yes. <laughs> what all a box of Mac. Can we try the real pizza now? I'm taking this huge piece right here. Let's look at that. That looks like a pizza. It's okay. Yeah. The other it. crust is better. Yes. The other sauce is better. The cheese isn't even that flavorful. So in terms of overall quality, Daya actually sort of wins. It's just that the, 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 the cheeseless cheese. Yeah, there's no flavor in it. There's no herbs. The cheese needs more salt. 5.98. It's about a 5.98 pizza. So wrap us out. Well. John's going back into his pizza hiding. If you're gonna try either of these two, I would actually recommend trying this. Do you wanna dance with a slice of pizza? No. <gasps> the Cheese Time says this is a Halloween special you can't miss. <laughs> Box Max, Maxtory Science Theater 3000. Premieres Sunday, October 22nd, only on Red Cow.